Let's talk about color. Color is important, you have no idea. It's capable of sending different types of message. It can tell you if something is good or bad, if it's joyful or if it is depressing. So what are we going to do? We're going to work with this file. So please pause the video and click the link just below this video on the description area. I'll be here, pause it. Ready? Let's go. We're going to work with three panels, okay? We're going to work with color, properties, and swatch. In case you don't have them, remember that you can go to the upper menu, select window, then select color, swatch, color, and then properties. Let's continue. I'm going to start with color. You're going to find out that there are different types of color. There is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, red, green, and blue, hex color, pantone. There are different types. And what's the difference with all of them? Well, we're going to learn. In case you don't have it like this and you have it closed like this, don't panic. Just come here and select show options. What are we going to do? We're going to start with the printing method. This one belongs to process color is made by cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Depending how you combine the colors is the result that you're going to have. Right now, I have selected this icon. I don't know if you were aware. I'm going to change the color of this icon. I'm going to transform it into yellow. If I combine the yellow with magenta, I'm going to get red. If I combine yellow with cyan, I'm going to get green. If I want to get, for example, blue, I'm going to combine these two colors. And if I want to get something that is called registration, I'm going to combine these three colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. It's similar to black, but it's not as saturated as black. Like you can see the, the difference between these two. Now, why this is important? Depending on the type of project that you have, you have to define if you're going to print it, if you're going to watch it, I don't know, in your mobile device or iPad, or maybe you are going to do a web page. So if you're going to print it, this is the color mode that you're going to use. Now let's find out another one. HSV means hue, saturation, and balance is commonly used in Photoshop. Lab is commonly used in printing, offset printing. So as you're going to be a designer, or maybe you're going to work in mar marketing and communication, you're not going to use this one. We already seen cyan, magenta, yellow, and black that is commonly known as process color. Let's meet RGB. RGB is made by red, green, and blue. Let me present them to you. Red, green, and blue. They are really bright colors, as you can see right now. Depending how you combine them is the result that you're going to get just right here. What do we have below them? We have something that is called hex code. And this is an hexadecimal. It means that six digit combination of numbers and letters. They represent a color in RGB format by combining these three values, you know, red, green, and blue. Now, it is commonly used in web design. For example, when you are programming a web page, you usually put this type of number. It's a combination of letters and numbers, okay? Now, when you see this alert, it's telling you that the color is too bright. You can see the difference between this one and this one. So if you want to print it, it's going to look like this, not so bright. That's really good in InDesign because they're always helping you to find out what's going to happen, okay? now. This is one way to get colors. Let's see other way to get colors. For this exercise, I'm going to select the, the line or the stroke around the box. Let's open swatch. When you select a color, you're going to be able to select it from this area, okay? Just by clicking. But how about if you want to use um, a gold color, Pantone color? How can you add it here? Let's see. Let's come to the corner and let's select where it says new color swatch. On the top, you're going to find the name. 
If this means that it has 76 of magenta, 96 of yellow, and two of black, it has no name, it is processed, it was made with process color, that is why it says cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. But how about if I want a special color, you know, Tiffany color, gold color, how can I get it? Well, the first step is to select a spot. Once you have it like this, where it says color mode, click it, and then you're going to be able to get all the Pantone colors. Let's select the metallic ones. So if you want gold, you're going to click it, you're going to add, and automatically it's going to appear right here. This is telling me that this is a spot color. What is a spot color? In offset printing, it's a special pre-mixed ink that requires its own printing plate on a printing press, okay? So it means that instead of using four inks, like process color, it's only going to use one. Remember always to click where it says add, okay? Now, let's take a look at the difference between the combination of the colors. Right now, these four colors means that it's a process color. This means that it's a spot color. Now, how about if I want to create another color? Let's come here, new color swatch. How about if I want to select RGB color? The combination is going to be made by red, green, and blue. I'm going to select it like this. I'm going to transform it. I'm going to name it. And when I click add, it's going to be named here and take a look, red, green, and blue. The software is always going to give you how the color was made so you don't make any mistake, okay? If you're going to print it, you're going to use this. And if you're going to use it for web design or mobile devices, this. Once you have it, you can copy this number too. It's really useful too. I'm going to click it right now by done. So this is how you can get some colors. I'm going to close it. Now, I'm going to click this one, but I'm going to focus on the fill color. That means white. I'm going to select properties. Remember that on this window, you're going to be able to transform all the properties of the object that you have selected. If I have a text, everything is going to be related with a type. But if I have an object, everything is going to be related with an object. Now, why this is important? Because you can transform it. For example, opacity in 100% means that the color is pure. But if you change it and lower it, you're going to make it a little bit transparent, okay? You're changing the opacity of a figure or a shape. Now, what else can we do? Well, we can add some special effects to this. Right here on the same window, you're going to find out that you have FX. This is going to be called a special effects. So, first of all, you need to have the object selected. Then you can come here to the corner and click it, and you can drop shadow, for example, and these effects are really similar to the ones you have seen in Photoshop. Once you check the box, for example, like this, it's going to appear on, and it's going to be applied. If you want to see a preview, I suggest you always use a preview option. It's going to be better, so you can have a, a direct result of what you're doing. If you don't like it, you just uncheck it, and that's it. You can apply all the effects that you have right here, but try to make it look real. Let's try, for example, bevel and emboss. It's going to give this volume to the, to the frame. The area that we have right here by effects, it means that you can change the distance, the angle. You can make, for example, it looks um, a little bit larger, like this, and separate it from the block. You can change the opacity. If you place it in 100%, it's going to be darker. But if you move it to the left, it's going to be more transparent, OK? You can change the size, and it's going to make it look more blurred. And the spread is going to help you, for example, to show the um, intensity that you're going to have. Take a look how it's changing, OK? So when you're using the property panel, you're going to be able to change the properties of the object. It can be applied to objects, frames, shapes, text. So this is where you can get all the colors. What else can we find out about colors? I'm going to click this one and I'm going to close it. When we have colors, depending where do you want to get the color, there is another way to get the colors. So you can come to the top, 
for example, and select it. Come to the corner and select it. You can double click it on the toolbar and use the eye drop to select the color that you prefer. These four colors are telling you the number that corresponds to the color that you have right here. So it means that in RGB is this, in hex color is this, cyan magenta, yellow and black or process color is this, hue saturation and balance and laboratory color like this. If you want to add it, remember, you just have to click it and there you have it. I already save it here, place it here and I have it save it like here. If you want to change the number, you just have to double click it and you can use Pink Panther, for example. I'm going to name it like that. Remember to review everything that is related with color, contrast, how you combine colors, because the most important thing about colors is that it's really it is ready to, to stand out and to gain attention, okay? Sometimes, for example, it's better to use white instead of black, maybe orange and pink, they are not too good together. So the decisions that you're going to do is up to you, depending on the message that you want to send. The other way of getting color is using gradient tool. If you don't have it in the left, right panel, sorry, you can go to the top menu window and then color gradient. You're going to have this window. There are two types of gradient. We have lines and we have radial. This means that this is for um, figures that have lines, for example, like a square, like a triangle, and this is for circles mainly. Now, you're going to select the object and then you're going to click this box. You, if you're using this type of gradient, you can define the angle by writing down the number and you're going to have this result, okay? If you want to change the position, you're going to click it here. This is how it's going to change. Now, if you want to change the colors that you have right here, you can open the swatch window. And for example, I'm going to select, let's see, I'm going to select the orange color and I'm going to drop it right here. And then you're going to have this type of gradient. So when you drop the colors right here on the slider, is when you're going to get this type of gradients. In case you don't like the result, don't panic. Remember that you can come here, hold it, release it outside the slider. And there you have it. There is another type of a gradient, but depends on, on your style and how you look it. I mean, maybe right now I was lucky and it looks nice, but sometimes it doesn't, <laughs> okay? There is another option. Let's draw a circle, please. We're going to apply the gradient in radial style, okay? Now, at the side of the gradient on the toolbar, right here, you can see that it says gradient feather tool. So let's click it and let's see what's going to happen. I just have selected that tool and the object and then I'm going to make a line. Huh, maybe you're going to say, Brenda, I don't know what's going on. Well, let me show it to you. It's making it transparent. Okay, so this is different from Illustrator, but it's perfectly good. I believe it works for you too, right? You have it right here. I believe I have another uh, path right here. Yes, I do. Let me delete one, and here it is. And this is how you can do, for example, something that is going to have a different feather or feather. You can move it to different areas and position and angles, and it's going to become transparent. If you want to change the colors, remember, you can come here to swatch, and maybe I'm going to change it into blue, or darker blue, and the effect is going to look really great. So this is how you can use the colors in InDesign. As you can see, it's really similar to the one that you have used in the past. The tools are in different place, maybe, but the results are the same. I hope you enjoy it and that you learn a lot. And we're going to continue. Have a wonderful day. Bye.